Hey guys, it's Dylan. So there is a lot going on in the copper industry and it will have a direct impact on Tesla over the next five to 10 years. And not just Tesla, but the entire sustainable energy movement as well. And honestly, I have no idea how more people aren't talking about this because not just from that standpoint, but from an investment standpoint, grabbing a copper ETF over the next five to 10 years might be a really good idea and by the end of this episode i think you'll understand why but getting right into it as you can see copper futures hit their highest levels in 10 years on monday due to several factors supply concerns a weaker dollar biden's infrastructure plan growth in renewable energy and china's increasing demand commodities broker anna stablum said we are in for a good run higher as we are having supply issues chilean port workers are threatening to strike which is a short-term issue, but will cause some trouble for shipments into China into an already tight, concentrated market. And copper plays a huge role in renewable energy technology given its conductivity characteristics. Technology, semiconductors, data centers, and cellular towers all require significant copper usage. And what you really need to know is that EVs use about four times as much copper as the traditional ICE counterparts. And it's everything from the battery pack to the wiring, the inverters, the motors. They all use copper, but it's not just EVs. It's also the wind farms and the solar panels. One wind farm alone can use anywhere from 4 to 15 million pounds of copper. And as you can see, copper has climbed to a 10-year high above $4.50 per pound. Now, in this space, they use different measurements. So if you see ton, there's a T-O-N or a T-O-N-N-E. Generally speaking, we're going to be talking about T-O-N-N-E for the rest of this video. And one ton, T-O-N-N-E, is 2,204 pounds if you want to do the conversion. But to do the simple math for you, you would just take $4.50 per pound times 2,204 pounds in one ton to give you a rough current price of $9,918 per ton, T-O-N-N-E. Why does Jeff Bezos understand and appreciate copper? He is an electrical engineer. Most people won't grasp that. He's been to the mines of Chile. He understands that business. So unless you are an electrical engineer or like myself, I took electrical studies at the British Columbia Institute of Technology, you do not appreciate the magnitude of copper that will be required in a middle of the of, of a middle scenario where when you look at the amount of copper we installed around the world from, uh, from 1890 to today, we will need to duplicate that in the next they say 30 years. I will tell you it's going to happen probably even sooner than that because of this trillions of dollars of stimulus being allocated right now to these green energy programs, the commercialization of all of these things that do now work, mm -hmm. and it's happening country after country. I'll give you one anecdotal piece of information. Who is the world's largest buyer of copper? It's China State Grid. They just under 3 million tons a year on a 25 million ton market. Did you know, David, that China's 14th five-year plan, the releasing of it this year, China's state grid is gonna increase spending by 50%, five, five zero percent. Now I haven't done the analysis on how much copper China state grid is gonna consume, but it's gonna be a lot more. Okay. Because the world's single buy, biggest buyer is gonna be spending more. And remember, it's not just EVs, it's not just sustainable energy. Although that's a huge piece, there is global demand in homes and telecoms and many other things that need copper. It's the best conductor of electricity. There really aren't any substitutes. We'll talk about aluminum briefly, but the supply isn't there and this is going to become an issue over the next five to 10 years. That copper prices, in my opinion, will surpass their old all-time high, which was 10,000 a ton or four and a half dollars a pound. And they're going much higher because we have to enable this. And why will it be enabled? Because if you're in the business of making motors, windings, cables, anything that enables electrification, you are going to have boom times like you've never had in the past 120, 130 years. So what is a boom time? Well, it's when there's a ton of demand and not a lot of supply. So this brings us to the supply issue. And here's a good intro. If you look the yield that this will provide us, first of all, it's a $65 billion investment between now and 2025, 2026. And you, it should yield, if it works correctly, just over 3 million tons of copper metal. Well, we're, if we're growing at 5 or 6%, and the, the, the copper market is 25 million tons, so it's growing by one, or it will be growing by one, or one and a half million tons per year, David. So this extra 3 million tons we get is not going to cut it. Can we see some efficiencies come out of existing operations at the margin? Probably, maybe 5%. Some say as, as high as 10. It's still not going to cut it. So just one man's opinion, but the data seems to back up what he's saying. The current global demand for copper, 25 million, expected to double roughly over the next 10 years. 
And over the next seven years, you can see there's only an expected additional capacity of about three point whatever it was, seven million tons. So where's that difference gonna come from? Honestly, right now, nobody really knows. But there's more. In just the last two weeks, Goldman Sachs came out with a report about copper. Let's take a quick look at some highlights. Forecasts a long-term supply gap of 8.2 million tons of metal by 2030, the highest on record, and twice the size of the gap that triggered the bull market in copper in the early 2000s. By the way, if you see MT, that means million tons, and if you see KT, that means thousand tons, if you get into the space. Despite the fact that copper prices are up 80% over the last year, there have still been no material greenfield project approvals. So this brings us to the point that over the last few years, there have been very few new discoveries of copper mines. And by the way, a greenfield project is simple. It's just one with minimal to no previous exploration, so like a brand new mine, while a brownfield project can range from the advanced development stage with a known resource to a proven producer. But getting back to Goldman, they forecast a copper price of $15,000 per ton by 2025, up from the roughly $9,000 per ton today. Goldman estimates EV-related demand to amount to 2.4 million tons of copper by 2030 versus the 210,000 tons in 2020 with an additional 153,000 tons of copper demand coming from charging stations versus 14,000 tons in 2020. We expect this demand to grow at a rate of 31% per year for the remainder of the decade. And those Goldman numbers are strictly EV demand. Add on top of that, at the moment, we get about 90% recovery from the average copper mine, which really just means that technology advancements in mining can't get us that much extra copper supply we really need to find new discoveries. And at the moment, it's just not happening. You know, when I entered the business 20 years ago, copper was trading at 50 cents a pound. It's now trading at 420 a pound on its way to make a record highs next year. If any of you have a laptop, uh, an iPhone, are thinking of buying an electric car, or renovating your house or building a new house, you're going to consume a tremendous amount of copper. And we all know the population in the world has doubled in the last 30 years and, and the demand for copper is skyrocketing because of the electrification of the planet. And the one thing no one's talking about is how few mines are being found. And the other thing people are not talking about is how long does it take to put a copper mine into production? It takes anywhere from 12 to 20 years, depending on the social environment of where the mine's being found. So, you know, we like to say as, as great explorers, um, we're hunting for it in the right address, but all the easy mines have been found and it's going to really be the tenacious explorers that have been at it for a long time that are going to come up with the big discoveries. So copper is the number one market globally for metals that's facing the biggest shortages, production cliffs, and I think it's going to be the most robust performance over the next 50 years. And a huge thing to remember here, you can't convert a resource into a reserve if it doesn't make economic sense. So what I'm saying is that there's many people in the industry that say if the price of copper isn't above $3.50 per pound, then about 75% of these new discovery mines that are expected to come online won't make economic sense. Add to that the fact that it takes roughly 7 to 20 years to bring one of these new mines into production. And so obviously over that time, the price of copper is going to fluctuate which really just boils down to the fact that the incentives for finding and implementing these new projects and these new discoveries, it's a very difficult task and the window has to be perfect. So we're going to run into some of these demand supply problems over the next five to 10 years. I'll give you a specific fact. Um, we all seen Teslas, we've seen electric cars. About 3% of the driving population of the world drives electric cars. If you double that to 6%, there's no copper left in any existing mine in the world right now. And so the, the projection for electric car saturation in our driving population globally is to be at about 7.8% in 2030, which is about eight years away. So we have a big problem, a big shortage of the copper. You know, we've heard about it being discussed as a strategic metal. It, it is becoming that metal that everyone's using and nobody's finding. And sadly, this is probably a topic that we're not going to get a ton of detail on from Tesla regarding their specific copper deals, how long they're for, how much they're getting, who they're getting it from. But it would be a fun question, I think, on one of the conference calls to have somebody ask. Um, but with that said, I'm going to leave you with a quick excerpt from the Q1 conference call. Elon did actually talk about copper. So I'll leave you with that. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Anyway, it's, it's entirely possible to power all of Earth with a small percentage of Earth's area. Um, and then to transmit that power uh, through um, high voltage DC lines, no new technology, no, no, uh, you don't need like, um, you know, room temperature superconductors. This is a total, also another myth. Room temperature superconductors 
uh, almost irrelevant in my opinion, almost irrelevant. <laughs> um, low cost, long distance power lines using copper uh, or aluminum or just, uh, very important. 